Today we're going over the internet. We're going to discuss the chaos on the internet. So today's topic is internet chaos. Because you brothers, some of y'all in here are crazy. You sisters, some of y'all in here are crazy. You brothers and sisters online, some of y'all are crazy. You have lost your minds. Looking for, lo hey, Abiel, can you find me Eddie Murphy? Give me that. Give me that. Let me know. It just popped into my head. I need to know if you, if you can find that. Because this is the problem in Israel today. There's a, there's a big problem. Okay, play that right there. I play it. This is you brothers and sisters on looking for love on the internet. Looking for love in all the wrong places. Looking for love. Hey, that's some of y'all. Some of you sisters, some of you brothers are, are, are looking for love in all the wrong places. Looking, looking for love. And y'all getting burned. You are getting burned. Now. There have been many scenarios. Sisters have, sisters, I'm, 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 I'm directing this to y'all first. Then I'm going to make a sharp left and come this way. But I got to start with y'all first. Some of y'all on Facebook, name some of them social medias. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, looking for boys, looking for men. Then what ends up happening, What y'all are singles. What the hell is that? Then what ends up happening is you find a, a brother who ends up being a pedophile. He asking you, do you have kids? And you, you think, oh, yeah, you like kids. Yeah, I like kids, sister. I like kids. I love children. And you all into it because women like when men love their kids. Well, here's my little boy. He's there with my daughter. And, and he said, oh, they're adorable. We can make a nice family. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, this dude is a third-level pedophile. And she don't know it. But she on the internet being deceived and fooled by this knucklehead, uh, Abiel. Let's look at pedophile. Now you you have some Israelites. Fringes bought up blue that are pedophiles. Just because a brother wears fringes and a board up blue does not make him right. You got many wicked Israelites out there. Now here's pedophile. Pedophilia or oh, pedophilia is a psychiatric disorder in which an adult or older adolescent experiences a primary or exclusive sexual attraction to prepubescent -pu children, generally age 11 years or younger. Now, you know why that's very important? Because there is a camp, an Israelite camp, who teaches, according to God, you can deal with any child, any girl, a man can men a girl, as long as she has her menstrual cycle. And they say, even if she's nine years old. Hello? Hello, red flags, red flags. Pedophile. I smell pedophile. No, I want to end right there. Now, give me the next article. I want the article on how to spot, how to identify a pedophile. Now, I don't want all of it. It gives you a whole lot. You women, y'all can look at this on your own when you get it, when you get home. But I want. I think I wrote it down. I want number three. Go down to number three, Abiel. Number three. Know the common characteristics of a child molester. While anyone can turn out to be a child molester, the majority of child molesters are men. Are men. Huh. Regardless of whether their victims are male or female, many sexual predators have a history of abuse in their own past, either physical or sexual. Go down to number five. Okay. Look for signs of grooming. The term grooming uh, refers to the process of the child molester undertakes to gain a child's trust, and sometimes the parents' trust as well. Over the course of months or even years, a child molester will increasingly become a trusted friend of the family, offering the babysit, take the child shopping or on trips, spend time with the child in other ways. Many child molesters won't actually begin abusing a child until trust has been gained. Some may use other opinions around them to back up their trustworthiness in order to take children shopping. Now, go down, keep going down, go down. Go down to number four. 
Okay. Teach your child about staying safe online. Make sure your child knows that predators often pose as children or teenagers in order to lure children in online. Back to, we're getting back to that internet. Monitor your child's use of the internet, keeping rules in place to limit his or her chat time, having regular discussions with your child about whom he or she is communicating with online. There's a lot on here, so you women, y'all need to uh, read this. Now, get me the next article, Abiel, about right there. Zoom in on this. Zoom in on this. Some brothers, the new trick, sisters, is religion. Let's use the Bible to get to it, getting them children's draws. Does religion, and not just Catholicism, produce more than its fair share of child abusers? Not just Catholics. Guess what that includes? Israelites. <laughs> Some of y'all in here might be mad because I'm blowing your spot up, but that's what I'm here to do. I wanted to headline this post, Child Sexual Abuse in Defense of the Catholic Church, but I couldn't quite bring myself to do it. I suppose the thought of being seen as the atheist version of Bill F. Donahue, I know the F isn't his middle initial, but I like to imagine it is, didn't exactly sound appealing. Go down, go down. Okay, this is a Yeshiva University Chancellor, so-called Jew, Norman Lamb, resigned Monday amidst growing pressure over allegations of sexual abuse at Yeshiva University. In the Talmud, listen good, in the Talmud, they allow men to deal with children from the age of three years old and up. That's some nasty stuff. Now that's a hidden secret among so-called Jews. Those that study the Talmud, that's in there. Uh, where am I at? Yeshiva University Chancellor Norman Lamb resigned Monday amidst growing pressure over allegations of sexual abuse at Yeshiva University High School, stretching back decades. A scandal that was first reported by the forward in December. In a letter announcing his resignation, Lamb apologized for his failure to go to police with reports of sexual abuse against high school students. Come on. Uh, but Kevin Mulhern, an attorney representing 22 men, allegedly abused at YUHS between 1971 and 1981, 1989, said that the apology did not go far enough. Rabbi Lamb's mea culpa in admitting that he responded inappropriately to reports of sexual abuse at YUHS is a positive first step, but only a first step. Mulhern told the forward, the conspiracy of silence at YU involves many high-level administrators, not just Rabbi Lamb. It is the institution as a whole, not just one man, which needs to make amends. Come up so I can see it. All right, bear with me a second. I'm going to start jumping. Uh, no, let me just start here. Do you know how many non-Catholic church stories there are exactly like that one? Non, we, he's discussing non-Catholics. He's not talking about Catholics. It says, uh, self-styled holy men who molest children and other self-styled holy men who shield the abusers from judicial consequences. Now, I pause there for a reason. There was a video of brother, one brother named Polite asked another Israelite brother, what if the Spirit of God got on one of your brothers and he raped your nine-year-old daughter? The Israelite camp leader said, well, he got, he, what did he say? Make sure I don't misquote. It's according to scriptures, he got to deal with it. Now, that's some evil for you right there. Yeah, he got to deal with it. That's some evil for you. So I'm reading this for a reason. Now, remember, this is an atheist that wrote this. He sat down and did research on dudes that use the Bible as a front to get in your children's underwear. <clears throat> in the world of Judaism alone, news reports of child abuse are so numerous that the admirably tenacious and prolific writer, Maria Rosenberg, who runs the failed Messiah blog, has a hard time keeping up. There can be no doubt that the Catholic Church is up to its gilded spires in child abuse. I'm halfway through Pulitzer Prize winner Michael D'Antonio's Mortal Sin, Sex, Crime, and the Era of Catholic Scandal, and I have to put the book down every five to ten pages when I can no longer stomach either the descriptions of abuse or the hypocrisy or both. Go up. Let me look. I'll start there. The number of Muslims, and he goes into Islam now. 
He says, Islam and Judaism have less child abusers, he says above, I'm just um, uh, uh, paraphrasing, is because Christianity is a larger religion. So now he gets on Islam. There's a number of Muslims in the U.S. from where I get most of my news is only around three million. In majority, Muslim countries' sex taboos are so pervasive that I'm willing to bet that most abuse cases, if they come to light at all, are never reported in the media. Plus, remember, they were talking about a religion whose prophet bedded a nine-year-old girl. So remember, Muhammad's wife was a nine-year-old girl. So now it makes you wonder when you got certain Israelites say you can start from the age of nine, where they're getting that from. Right there. Um, let me see. Go up. Abby, I'm, I'm going to just jump. Okay. Still, in all families, they have a point. I don't want to give them an inch of forgiveness or a soup con Soup song, thank you, of absolution. But we shouldn't blind ourselves to the reality that religion in general is often a child abuse breeding ground. I'm going to read that part again. Religion in general is often a child abuse breeding ground, though, of course, not exclusively so. It has to do, I think, with the confluence of factors that are wrapped up in the nature of clergydom. Off the top of my head, a patriarchal worldview, that means man worldview, a feeling of divine empowerment. I can do anything. God is with me, point of view. You ever hear them say, I got 100% truth. God is only dealing with me. This is what he's warning you about. Sexual repression, the belief that forgiveness is but a confession or a prayer away. You do the dirt, then go, God forgive me, then you're okay. Uh, access to children who accept authority and accept Expect instruction. The illogical nature of faith, which to a child perhaps makes sexual requests no more bizarre or suspect than baptism or religious circumcisions or any number of other out there rituals. The unquestioning trust of the flock in its clergy. Congregants' aversion to learning the distasteful truth about a religious figurehead. Like you don't want, they don't want you to learn the background of the leader over the said congregation. The attendant reluctance to go to the police, press charges, start a scandal. Um, our church also does so much good. Um, let me see, do the top. Let me see if I can do the top. Okay, I'll just go down the bottom. But it should be clear that child rapists come in all kinds of guises. And while we do well to keep a wary eye on the Catholic Church, true vigilance doesn't take a break around morality peddlers of any stripe. Now, let's go to the actual scriptures now. Let's go into the Bible itself. No, no, no. Get me. You know what? You know what I'm going to do now? I'm going to do something new. I'm going to make a turn now. Go to the Blue Letter Bible. I did say it. I did say it. Go to the Blue Letter Bible. It's really happening right now. You didn't do that, did you? I got to do it. Go to the, go to the, yeah, let's go in. Go to 1 Corinthians 7.36. Now, I'm going, I want all y'all to get 1 Corinthians 7.36. The reason we're going there, this is the verse that these pedophiles are saying is proof you can marry a girl when he get, she gets her menstrual from nine years old and up. This is the verse they're using. So they went, they went into the Bible and got this. Can you blow it up big? Okay. I'm going to read it. It says, but if any man think that he behaveth himself uncomely toward his virgin. Mm. If she pass the flower of her age and need so require, let him do what he will. He sinneth not. Let them marry. So if you notice, it says, when it uses the word virgin in and pass the flower of her age, they're interpreting that to say, she just got her menstrual, you can marry her, even if she's nine years old. This is what Israelites, 34th Street and 7th Avenue, are teaching. Now, okay, notice what it says for flower. Past the flower of one's age. Oh, look, beyond the bloom or prime of life. Number two, overripe, plump, and ripe of a virgin. Meaning she's, notice it says, past the flower of one's age. Now, notice it says, past her age. Now, give me the versions. Okay, footnotes. Or if she is getting beat, notice what it says. Beyond the usual age for marriage. Do y'all see that? So what is that verse really talking about? Who can figure it out? Is that, now go back to the actual verse. It's talking about age, beyond the age. What is it saying? 
But if any man think he behaved himself uncomely toward his virgin, if she passed the flower of her age, what does that mean? Does that mean she's nine? What is it saying? She's old. She's old. She might be 50, 60. That's what he's talking about. But if any man think himself uh, uncomely toward his virgin, he was betrothed to a, woman, a young girl, right? It doesn't say the age. Betrothed to her. But he never lays with her. The marriage is never, what? Consummated. It says if she passed the flaw of her age, she's gotten old now. And needs so required. Right, menopause, thank you. And needs so require, let him do what he will. He said, if not, let them marry. That's what it's talking about. Like now he wants her. She's up in age. She's old now. She said, he said, listen, let me deal with her right. That's why I said, but if any man uh, think that he behaveth himself uncomely, why is it uncomely? Un uncomely? Because he was uh, engaged to her right. for a long time and never fulfilled the marriage. That's what it's talking about. Do you brothers see that? Who in here believes this means you can sleep with nine-year-olds? Raise your hand. Elder. Okay. Elder, could, could, could we pull another precept? Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Before we leave this with Azep, could you go back to the first definition where they said beyond, when the word prime was up there? Beyond the bloom or prime of life. Right. You hit the prime of life <laughs> around 20 or 30. That's your prime. Is the prime of life nine years old? <laughs> And you see, these fools will never go to the, they always, the blue ladder, the blue ladder. But when it comes to the things like this, they, no, don't go to that verse. It's going to cut us if we go there. So you brothers window shopping, listening to these in the closet pedophiles, because that's what I really believe the majority of them are. Hey, they said we got the word pedophile wrong. We got to look that up too. Pedophile means child love. That's exactly. What I mean, child lover. But, but can we just put one more scripture with that yeah. power? Go to Sirach. Chapter 26, verse 19. Since they're saying that the flower is her menstrual, okay? They better stick with Leviticus. <laughs> we use that for that. Because they keep stressing that, stressing that, stressing that. Let's flower see, doesn't always mean let, menstrual. Let, let's see what's going to happen here. Let's see if it goes in conjunction with what the elder just pulled out. The book of Sirach, chapter 26 and verse 19. My son, keep the flower. Keep the what? Keep the flower. So the man got a menstrual. The man got a menstrual. <laughs> Read it again, please. My son, keep the flower of thine age sound. Why does he say the flower of thine age sound? Because it goes in conjunction with what the elder just brought out. Some people, as they get older, okay, they become weak. They're not as strong as when they were in their youth. Read on. And give not thy strength to strangers. Give not thy strength to strangers. Okay, when you go, grow old in this truth, you want to grow old and wise. Okay, and that's what he was explaining here. Get 1 Samuel 2.33. I like that one better. 1 Samuel 2.33. To show you that the word flower is used in different ways in the Bible. But the way it used in Corinthians is not talking about what them fools are saying it's talking about. Now, here's another example. 1 Samuel 2.33, Isaac. 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 33. And the man of thine. And the, notice it's talking about man, man, man. Go ahead. And the man of thine, whom I shall not cut off from mine altar, shall be to consume thine eyes and to grieve thine heart. And all the increase of thine house shall die in the flower of their age. So does that mean a man had a period? These dudes as simple as that. That's what I was, y'all on the internet watching these fools, these clowns with a Bible. They don't know what they're talking about, but they will lead you into a life of sin. That's right. And they, jail time. Then you're going to call us to bail you. We ain't bailing you out. <laughs> they, they trying so hard to fulfill their lust, they're distorting the scriptures. They can't even stay in a place of, of, of sense, of sound doctrine. Exactly. Could, could I ask them to read that? Read it again. Read that verse again. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 33. And the man of thine, whom I shall not cut off from mine altar shall be to consume thine eyes and to grieve thine heart and all the increase of thine house shall die in the flower of their age. So what word could be substituted for the word flower? I can't hear you. I want it on the microphone. What word could be instituted there? 
instead of the word flower, what word could we put in there and it will not change one iota of what we just read here? The word is prime. The word is prime. If you put the word prime in there, it will not change the verse at all, which is exactly when we read the definition. That's the reason why it said beyond the prime. It's, just using, it's telling you it's the same word. Right. Let me show you that in the Bible that there was always age restrictions. Give me Genesis 38 and 6. Always an age restriction. Now, people like to use the argument, well, the Bible is not specific about a woman's age. However, you got to use common sense. So I'm going to show you with a boy. Okay? Give me Genesis 38 and let's start at verse 6. The book of Genesis, chapter 38 and verse 6. And Judah took a wife for Ur, his firstborn, whose name was Tamar. And Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord slew him. And Judah said unto Onan, Go in unto thy brother's wife and marry her, and raise up seed to thy brother. There's a law in the Bible that if a brother died without having children, his next brother had to lay with the woman to raise up a child in that brother's name. Everybody understand that? Read on. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his. Right. The, the child would not be called after Onan's name, but his brother's name who had previously died. Read. And it came to pass, when he went in unto his brother's wife, that he spilled it on the ground. That he read that part again? What verse you at? Verse 9. Go ahead. When he went in unto his brother's wife, that he spilled it on the ground, lest that he should give seed to his brother. So what did he spill on the ground? Or the sperm. Why did he spill it on the ground? He didn't want to give the child in his brother's name. That's why. Read. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord, wherefore he slew him also. Then said Judah to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, Remain a widow at thy father's house, till Shalah my son be grown. For he said, lest pre peradventure he die also, as his brethren did. Did y'all notice what it said? Did anybody notice what was said in that verse? What is the key you want in that verse? Renan. Give him the mic. Until he was grown. Until he was grown. Until he was grown. 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 Now, what does that mean? Grown. What's the age of a man? Give me Tobit 1 and 9. We have to, we're going to balance the man age out with the woman. That's all we can do. Or whatever your, if your state you live in, what's the age of consent here in New York? Is it 18? 18. If it's 18 here, leave it like, and it goes this varies from state to state. But you have to abide. That's Romans 13. What is it, 17? Abide in that law. Now, where we at Isaac? Tobit 1 and 9. Tobit, chapter 1 and verse 9. Furthermore, when I was come to the age of a man, I married Anna of mine own kindred, and of her I begat Tobias. So it says when he became the age of a man. Some of you young boys in here, 16, you want to get married. You want a woman. No. It says when he became the age of a man. Get me um, Deuteronomy 24 and 5 now. These are the precepts you, know, you got to find or study to know what the age of marriage is according to God. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 24 and verse 5. When a man hath taken a new wife. See, when a man hath taken a new wife. Listen good. He shall not go out to war. That's it. He shall not go out to war. So now. You got to ask yourself, okay, when a man takes a new wife, he can't go to war. At what age does a man, is a man allowed to go to war? Numbers 1 and 3. The book of Numbers, chapter 1 and verse 3. From 20 years old and upward, all that are able to go forth to war in Israel, thou and Aaron shall number them by their armies. So do y'all see that? From 20 years old and up, you can go to war, which explains Deuteronomy 24 and 5 when it says, when a man have taken a new wife, he shall not go out to war. That's the age of 20. You men understand that? So if you brothers are under 20, don't be looking for a woman. Oh, I want me some punani. You ain't getting none. You ain't getting none. Get me um, uh, 2 Timothy 3 and 6. Now I'm going to get a letter tonight from some Benjamite upset. 
that I said that. Watch. You sisters, keep your letters to yourself. 2 Timothy 3, 6 and 7. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 6. For of this sort are they which creep into houses. So now you sisters, you online looking penub in all the wrong places. You might catch a pedophile with fringes and a border of blue. I'm telling you, read that again. Isaac. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins. They look for stupid women. Men look for stupid women. This is what God is saying, sisters. Men don't want that sister that get on her P's and Q's. Nah, she too smart. I want that dumb sister. That dummy over there. Yeah, I could get her. Go ahead. Led away with diverse lusts. Yeah, this sister got filled with a lot of lust. Go ahead. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. So these men that you find, sisters, they are always studying. When it says ever learning, they study the blue letter. They study the etymology. The they study the Greek. They study the Latin. They study Chinese. They study Swahili. Alex Jones. They study Alex Jones. They study Italian. <laughs> Read it again, ever learning from there. Verse 7. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. The knowledge of the truth means the knowledge of God's laws. They are never able to do it. That's what the Bible says. Give me that, Isaac, about what the truth is so we understand. Psalms 119, 142. An elder, the proof of what you're saying is, out of all the Israelite camps, they are the only camp that openly says, don't teach the woman. Exactly. They said that the women are, are stupid, they can't retain the scriptures, and don't waste your time teaching them. They even tell the men, lie to the woman about what you are. Don't even tell your woman you're an Israelite. Exactly. Okay? They're the only group that does that. Come on. Psalms 119 and 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. So God's law is the truth. Now let's go back to 2 Timothy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's stay right there. Read the last part of what you just wrote. Uh, verse 7. Verse 7. 2 Timothy 3, verse 7. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Okay, so... Why are they not able to come to the knowledge of the truth? We're going to jump on down to verse 8. Read verse 8. Verse 8. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Because they resist the laws of God. That's why. They hate God's laws. They don't want to be governed. But for sisters, jump on up to verse 5. Verse 5. Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. They have the form of godliness. They can read in the Hebrew, in the blue book. They got the bed, they do the prayers. They have the form. So silly women will get fooled by men like this. They, they'll use the Bible. They'll open the Bible and they'll begin to give you precepts out of the Bible to tell you what they're saying is right, what they're doing. And because you're unstudied, you'll fall from it. So it says, read that verse again. Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. So I want to jump back to verse 9. Verse 9. But they shall proceed no further. They'll get locked up. Read on. For their folly shall be manifest unto all men. And you'll see them like this on TV. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> read on. As theirs also was. Now watch this. I want to go. Now remember I said they're going to be using scriptures. Uh, Elder, do you mind, sir? Isaiah 28. <clears throat> Isaiah 28. We always read this. Uh, start with verse 10. No, I'll start with verse 9. Just read straight down to you get to verse 13. Isaiah 28 and verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. So you see how the elder went through that and explained <clears throat> through the spirit about a man of age going to war, give you numbers and explain to give you. You understand, when you're spiritual, you can discern God's words. You can put together precepts to explain your point. There's nowhere you read in the Bible where a woman is at the age of a menstrual cycle and it being 11 or 10 years old, and you're dealing with them. 
But who's going to be able to understand it? Those that are what? Do not resist God's commandments. They keep the commandments. That's how you get the understanding thereof. Read on. For precept must be upon precept. So you can go from Numbers to Deuteronomy. You can put it together. You can explain. Look at Tobit and put the scriptures together to understand and formulate a thought of the message that God is trying to send the people. Read on. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. Read on. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. And that's English for us, those here, French for those in the islands, those that speak Spanish. Read on. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. In God's laws, this Bible is where we rest at. This is where we get our comfort at. Read on. And this is the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. But you have some that would not hear. They resisted the truth. Read on. But the word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept. That's why they use 1 Corinthians 7. Precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. Read on. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. That they might go and fall backward and be broken. So they're going to use the Bible just like a godly man will. But they're going to have all the wrong precepts. And it's going to manifest. They're going to fall backward and be broken. If they don't repent, trust they will fall and it'll be manifest before all men watch this read on and be broken and snared and taken that's right in handcuffs read on wherefore hear the word of the lord ye scornful men these are those scornful men that hate god's laws they scorn as they hate justice men like that will not proceed so for you sisters, it's imperative that you study and know this Bible because they're looking for the dummy that's going to believe and listen to them. They need you to stay stupid so you don't know what to do. I got a question. Why do these men have this type of mind? How do you come to a point where you sit down, and I said this before, uh, they are the underbelly of Israel. They are savages, beast, beast. How do you come to the conclusion that if she's 16, she's been ready already six years. That was what he said. If she's 17, she's been ready six years already for sex. Watch this. Go to, go to Wisdom of Solomon 4. Wisdom of Solomon 4, verse 12. Said she's almost past the flower Yeah, she age. was past. That girl's still eating now, ladies. Are you serious? <laughs> I'm, I'm eating grape nut cereal. She's talking about she wants lemon heads. Go ahead. Wisdom of Solomon 4 and 12. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4 and verse 12. For the bewitching of naughtiness. Stop. That's right there. Those men are bewitched. They are reprobates. Go back to Titus, you said, Timothy. They are reprobate minds. For the bewitching of naughtiness, pedophilia is naughtiness. Read on. For the bewitching of naughtiness, Doth obscure things that are honest. They can't even see the truth. It's obscured. It blinds the truth for them because they got they got they got a a uh, a lustful spirit for an underage girl. They wear women's underwears <laughs> and posting videos about it and don't see anything wrong with it. They're bewitched. They have a spell upon them. Read on. And the wondering of concupiscence. What does the word concupiscence mean? Somebody. Say it. Evil sexual desire. Read on. And the wondering of concupiscence doth undermine the simple mind. It undermines, it destroys you, the simple mind. And it undermines some of you sisters that's simple as hell. Another word for simple is silly. Then you get with this man, you screwed up your life. Because he really don't want you. He wants your three-year-old. Be wise. Don't fall for it. Right. Exactly. And, he's, and the same doctrine, uh, Atlanta did a video where the black woman came up and said that one of these shiftless Israelites put her and her black kids out and moved the white woman in. <laughs> moved the white woman. Then, wait a minute, it gets better. The sister came back later on and said, this is the next week. Once the brother saw the video from that stupid camp, he let her back in that house. Guess where she got to sleep? On the floor. And a white woman sleep in the bed. Y'all deal with these dumb, wicked Israelites if you want. All we can do is warn you. All we can do is warn you. Shame on you. Now, we're going to turn, we're going to flip the script. I'm going to change the subject now. 
So, Elder, we had a class called Stop a Hole. Now we're going to stop a pedophile. Yeah. Is that it? We had Stop a Hole. Now we're stopping a pedophile with all his slick talk.